Hello there, and god damn. Oh, god damn. Ah. Uh, I was like, god damn, my glasses are dirty, though. I proceed to drop the script all over the floor and jumble up all of the pages, which is, uh, which is honestly, it's more of a goddamn, isn't it? Isn't it? Because I could have just gone through with the, like, dirty glasses bothering me, but no, I had to clean them. <laughs> ah, yes, welcome back to another episode of Business Plays. This one. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Do you hear the crunch? Mm. Yes, that's goddamn right. This video is brought to you by the absolute legends over at Magic Spoon. Yes. There's a little note here for me up top. At this point, you're an experienced Magic Spoon advertiser. You're goddamn right I am. As a result, we'd love to see what fresh, creative new angles you'd like to take your Magic Spoon and its delicious benefits to your audience this time around. That is a brilliant question, Magic Spoon, that I haven't thought of ahead of time. Well done, Simon, you big time professional. Ooh, 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 here's something different. Magic Spoon is bringing back two super popular flavors, cookies and cream and maple waffle. Hold on. A few moments later. Ah. Oh. oh no. <laughs> I really thought I'd kept boxes of these from last time because I generally keep uh, one of each flavor unused because in case I need to do it for an advert, but it appears that I ate all of those because they were delicious. So um, I'm sorry, Magic Spoon. I don't have examples of those, but I'm glad to hear they're coming back. Send me more and then you will see them appear. I'm sorry it says I ate all the cereal before the advert. Well done, Simon. Well done. They were like, bring something new to the advert. I'm like, okay, I'll bring something new. That's me eating it all before the advert. Oh yes, 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 yes. Hold on, hold on. A couple of boxes here. These are uh, my, I like to call them my like screen boxes. They're the ones that I don't eat. What's this? Yes, read nutritional values verbatim due to legal reasons. What's it say there? Zero grams of sugar, mm-hmm. Four grams of net carbs. Mm-hmm. 13 grams of protein. Yes! All of this is per serving, by the way. Although I suppose zero grams of sugar could mean like, I mean, if you filled the universe with magic spoon, it would still be zero grams of sugar because zero multiplied by infinity is zero, you big brains. Yes. This is the uh, fruity flavor. This is the frosted flavor. You can see that I take great care of my screen boxes. Um, they actually are quite in, in quite good nick for the, the punishment that I put them through. We are so far away from this. Uh, yeah, Magic Spoon is delicious. If you didn't get that already, I eat it all the time. Um, it's, it's like cereal that tastes unhealthy, but through the magic of science and nutrition and stuff like that, tastes amazing. You throw some milk in there and you will have a good time when you're getting your box. And that's a non-if, it's a when. It's available in the UK as well, by the way. You're welcome, Britain. I mean, don't thank me, thank Magic Spoon. But, you know, it's, uh, it, it's all very good. Get the peanut butter one, that's the best. Cinnamon is the second best. And then there's like the classic flavors, which are good, but you know, it's not peanut butter, is it? There's like cocoa, frosted, fruity. What's the other one? Can't even read that. It doesn't matter. Look, there's lots of options. You'll see them on the website. There's a link below. Uh, you could build your very own variety box using my code BLAZE for $5 off. You could choose one of the very best selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter flavors. I just said that. Oh, blueberry. That's the badger. That's the other one. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their products, back with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it, they'll just refund you beautiful stuff. So click the link below and use the code blaze for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com forward slash blaze to save $5 off your order today. And now today's video. Well, if this video gets particularly crazy, that's because it's all out of order. Let's hope not. For some reason, I don't put page numbers on these. Or I mean, Danny doesn't. Well, I've never asked him to, so we can't really blame Danny. Let's blame Danny. It's Danny's fault. It's particular. Oh, what are we talking about? Big Bang's famous product recalls that cost billions. Welcome to an episode where we get to enjoy some corporate Schadenfreude. I particularly like it. I mean, most of the time it's it's like, oh no, you know, with a corporate recall or whatever, you know, a product recall. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Toyota tried making a really safe car and then something went wrong and someone died as they had to fix all of these things, but it wasn't really their fault. It's much more enjoyable when it's a piece of corporation that's like, yeah, what do we do? Well, we knew that the brakes in the car didn't work very well, but we shipped it out anyway. And now we have to recall all of the models and replace them. And now we're out of business. And it's just like, hmm, yes. Whereas the other one's like, oh, that's a bummer. 
<laughs> Let's see what we have today for us. What happens here? If you're new, Daddy writes me a script. I'm going to read it. That's what's going on right now. And then Sam, our fine video editor, uh, or just video editor. He's also very good. So we can call him a fine video editor. But fine in British English, I don't know if it's the same in American English, means like, you could be like, she's fine, like, to a girl. And I don't want to like, I mean, Sam, I'm sorry. Please, please don't involve HR. <laughs> I'm just kidding, we don't have HR. We have the basement. Well, despite your quirks, the three of you are very accomplished in your respective fields. And we have, actually have Judge, Basement Judge, ETA, and he makes all of the decisions on the fate of the basement dwellers. What the f is going on? Let's just read the script. We're in a hole already. Let's go. It's a particularly stressful day in the lavish headquarters of super seedy Brum Brum Cars in Michigan. The room is thick with billowing smoke and deep tension the smoke is drifting from up from dozens of cigarettes because this is the 1970s and that was how corporate offices rolled back then. Yeah, I, uh, I work alone in my office at work. I'm not sure the legality of this, so let's just say allegedly. <laughs> I got a little box of cigars in here. Sometimes I'll just be having a little bit of work and I'll be like, let's smoke a cigar. I mean, allegedly, I don't do that and no one else works here. Alleged. Even if no one did work here, I'm pretty sure that's... Look, okay, this never happens. It doesn't happen. What are we talking about? Let's move on. God damn, Simon. <laughs> you're not just writing about your crimes, you're broadcasting them on the internet, you idiot. That's it, mister! You just lost your brain privileges! And the deep tension is festering over the concern that their largest best-selling car to roll off the production line is this really annoying habit of exploding and burning the driver to death. It would potentially cost a fortune to fix the defects, but Larry the accountant has been scribbling away on a few calculations, and he eventually lets out a triumphant squeal in the direction of the CEO. Oh no, this is one of those examples where it's like, this is how companies become pieces of Because Larry the accountant's like, yo, 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 the worst settlement in history for this sort of thing has been a billion dollars or whatever. And uh, they're like, what's the cost of the recall going to be? Well, it's going to be one billion dollars at hundred and one dollar. And then the corporate board are like, who do we have a loyalty to? That's right, the shareholders. So we're not going to do the recall and we're just going to let people die and pay the fines or pay the, uh, the legal thing. And it's like, uh-oh, don't do that. Don't do that. You shouldn't be doing The fine must be larger. <laughs> when pressed for an explanation, Larry announced that he's figured out a cost-effective solution to this crisis. Instead of fixing up all the vehicles, it would work out easier and sim cheaper simply to settle any lawsuits generated from hundreds of likely deaths. Oh, Simon, how did you predict this? Is it because it might be based on a real story, allegedly? I don't actually know what the real story is, but I assume it is. And I assume this happens all the f time because while corporations can't be evil they can do really shitty things and i mean they can't be evil because they're not people people it's an, you can't anthropomorphize a corporation we've talked about it before and everyone's like simon that's so pro capitalist it's, no it's no it's not i just really think that companies are pieces of shit and we can't rely on them to make the right ethical decisions they have to be regulated or there has to be enough fear of regulation or consumer reprisal that they do the right thing then otherwise they just won't in like 99% of the cases. Although ironically in my company, company, <laughs> like, uh, I mean, it is a company, but I mean it like, I, you know, I'm not a car manufacturer or something. I'm not a big deal, but it's like, we have the ethical obligation of not advertising Ray Shadow Legends because it's the right thing to do, even though we love money. And by we, I mean me. I love money. <laughs> well, my money. Jesus! The CEO chews over this information and then nods his head in quiet satisfaction. And he growls, let them burn. You what? Oh, shit. None of this ever happened. Of course it didn't. As any automobile enthusiast will tell you, super speedy Brum Brum cars closed down in 1969 after their production plant was destroyed by a fire caused by a casually discarded cigarette. But some, but a bob bob, but some would allege that the scenario bears at least a passing resemblance to one of the most notorious product recalls, re recalls in history involving the Ford Motor Company. Allegedly, Danny, allegedly, passing resemblance, <laughs> alleged passing resemblance in my opinion. Ah, I bet for those really expensive lawyers. In a stunning turn of events, a superhero is being sued. It's a tale which has often been the victim of misreporting and misunderstanding, but whichever way you dress it up, Ford didn't exactly come out of it with racing car stripes again, but a bob bomb -tsh. The Ford Pinto was a funny little subcompact car which had been rushed onto the market in 1971. Ah, nothing like rushing onto the market, something which travels really fast and has the ability to kill people. Especially in the 1970s. Did they even seatbelts back then? I mean, 
bit. Uh, to compete against the European and Japanese automakers who were beginning to eat into Ford's market share. Whereas it usually took an average of 43 months to get a new vehicle from product development to delivery, Ford whizzed through the whole thing in a record-breaking 25 months. Maybe the production was just a little bit too quick. Yeah, it probably was, and Ford just weren't used to making small cars. I mean, nowadays Ford make like the, uh, the Focus, that's a little car. They made something called a Fiesta for a while. I'm not, I don't, I don't know if they still make the Fiesta. Uh, why are we talking about Ford's model range? I don't know. But what I wanted to say is like Ford American cars. Oh my God. They're like, I went to America and I went to the North, North East, uh, West. Great job. And I kind of, I've been to America before and I've seen a few things, but I went to the Northwest and I was like, wow, there's a lot more trucks than I remember. Everyone's driving around in like an F-150 or an F-250. And there's, there's this thing called like an F-450, which has like four wheels at the back. They call it like a dually or something. And I'm like, oh my God, these things are f***ing huge. What sort of pussy drives an F-150? It's a car for children. It's barely a car at all. I mean, it's a truck, but it's barely a truck at all. Daddy, chill. And then I see one on the street here in Prague, where I live, like in the, and it's just absolutely massive. It doesn't even fit in a parking bay. Like there was one parked on my street and I'm like, whoa, who the f drives in a Ford F-150 in Europe? You've got to be insane. One, because petrol's insane, but also it's just way too big. Hack! And I'm like, oh my God, can you, ima can you just imagine seeing like an F-450? Because in America, the F-150 looks small. In Europe, it's like the size of a house. Not because it's any bigger, just everything in Europe's tiny, apparently. Well, it makes sense, I'm four foot three, and I'm big here. The fuel system was alleged to be very cheaply and poorly designed and left the Pinto vulnerable to fuel leak, a rear end collision, even at just a leisurely pace could result in a potential fireball. You know what problem is? Cars are rear ended all the time. Surely it's one of the most common accidents. Um, I've never been rear ended or rear ended anyone. But a friend of mine got re rear-ended like three times. And the problem is with getting rear-ended, it's always the other driver's fault because they should be leaving enough distance, right? But I'm also like, mate, maybe you're just braking a bit too harshly because at some point like on the third time, it's like, dude, what's up? But it didn't take long for the lawsuits to come flying in thick and fast. One of the most high-profile lawsuits involved a Pinto journey undertaken by Lily Gray and her young next-door neighbor, 13-year-old Richard Grimshaw, following a bump from behind. While traveling at only 30 miles an hour, the Pinto's fuel tank erupted, killing Lily Gray and leaving young Richard with third-degree burns over 90% of his body. Holy sh**, Ford. Get out your checkbook. Richard was initially awarded a staggering... $127.8 million in punitive damages by the jury, but the judge later ruled that this was a bit over the top and reduced the payout to a mere $3.5 million. Oh, f off, judge. Mr. I am the law. I think he should have got that. Normally, I'm like, that's outrageous. But in this case, I'm like, f you, Ford, you piece of shit, allegedly. I think he should have got that $127.8 million. And isn't the point of a jury, like, we don't have juries in civil trials. I'm pretty sure like no other country in the world does that, America. <laughs> but it's like, so judges make the decisions most of the time. But in this case, isn't the point of having the jury so they can award insane numbers like this to companies value themselves? Because they get sued the shit out of. But 3.5? That is way too low. Ford also had to deal with another 117 lawsuits over the next few years. And by 1978, they were under pressure from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, to recall 1.5 million Pintos along with 30,000 Mercury Bobcat sedans. <laughs> Mercury Bobcat is a brilliant name. It sounds like a Bobcat from Mercury. Yes! which suffered from a similar design flaw, but Ford didn't appear to be in any great hurry. Oh my God, oh my God, yeah, this is the problem. If you'd have left it $127.8 million, Ford will be like, get those f***ers off the road. But at 3.5, they're like, yeah, we can afford that. We can afford that. In fact, that, that, I mean, I don't, don't say it in front of the judge, but you'll be like, <laughs> you know, we're Ford. You know how rich we are, judgy. We're f Ford. You've heard of Henry Ford, right? You've heard of, you know, you see all our cars around. You know, like three, 3.5, I, I mean, thanks, but should I just take that out of my wallet right now? 
Ah! A year earlier, the left-wing investigative magazine Mother Jones, what a weirdly named magazine, had published an article which claimed to expose an alarming leaked internal memo from Ford. But the article wasn't entirely accurate, mainly because most of the sources were in fact angrily suing Ford at the time, and this has led to a wide misunderstanding of the details. Ah yes, some very unbiased reporting there, MJ. Mother Jones, not Michael Jackson, obviously. <laughs> What's the matter, Stan? You have a bad dream? Some still believe that the internal memo argued the case that it would be cheaper just to let Ford's customers die as the estimated cost of selling, settling the lawsuits would be at least the estimated costs of repairing all the vehicles. Yes, yes, but then less people would have died, Ford. You f***ing bastards, allegedly. This wasn't the case at all, but the truth is still very weird. The document known as the Pinto Memo wasn't actually an internal memo at all. It was a cost-benefit an analysis submitted to the NHTSA arguing the case against the proposed strengthening of fuel rate system regulation. What? It's like, why is the argument against making a car that doesn't explode, other than financial? Which you shouldn't make to the people who are in charge of safety. But the weird thing about this is that it placed a fixed cost on the value of a human life. I mean, yeah. Isn't that done all the time? People are like, you can't put a value on human life. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. Courts do this all the time. The medical establishment does this all the time. It's like, should we treat this disease? No because that person's gonna die in a month anyway, and we don't wanna buy them another week of suffering when we can use that same money to like give 700 people, uh, I don't know, like cataract surgery or whatever and improve their lives. <laughs> this, this is the, like, the reality of it. Like Our lives do have dollar pound figures attached to them all the time. You are a monster. According to Ford, the cost of modifying every new Pinto over the next few years with a better and safer fuel system would be $11 per unit. <laughs> f*** you, Ford. F*** you. Allegedly. And that as they were expecting to shift another 11 million Pintos, the total cost would work out at $121 million. Oh my god, they should have kept it at $127.8 million, shouldn't they? In comparison, and I have no idea why they even began to make this comparison, Ford figured the financial loss to society from projected 180 deaths from dodgier fuel systems that were more likely to burst into flames worked out at only $49.53 million. That is because the NHTSA themselves had hopefully advised Ford that the cost of human life is a nice round $200,000. Um, what the f***? I mean, I, yeah, yeah, sadly, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm like, I feel like I should be outraged at this, but... It is what it is. It's stats. As well as the projected 180 deaths, Ford had also calculated the existing unsafe fuel systems would cause a further 180 serious burn injuries, valued at $67,000 per burn, and 2,100 burned out vehicles, valued at $700 per pop. Wow, you're really underselling. $700? Even in the 1970s, isn't that pretty cheap for a car? So their argument seems to be that the financial loss to the automotive industry would be far greater than the financial loss to society from all the deaths and burns and car wrecks. And although this document had no real operational value, the sentiment is not a million miles away from let them burn. There it is. It's fine. Ford, no. That should be very much. I mean, yes, of course you have to draw these things up. I'm sure there are documents that put value on human life everywhere, as we've already discussed, but they should stay internal, out of the public eye, so we don't have to think about it. Because I don't like the idea that my life is only worth $200,000. I mean, on average, mine's worth a lot more because I'm awesome. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, the flaming hot potato here is that it took Ford a whole five years to finally get down to the voluntarily recalling the Pinto, despite the allegation that they that they had been fully aware of the problems with the fuel system when the vehicle was first launched. The company owned a patent on a much safer gas tank, which they chose not to implement as it was too expensive. Ah, uh, we we. I mean, I know what we're calling the piece of. Sh of course, they didn't because then it's not. Their job is to make a car for as cheaply and as high quality as possible and then sell that car as much as possible and make as much money for their shareholders as possible. Not to make the safest car. You've got to make it just safe enough so people will still buy it. Also, it's the 1970s. They're not wearing a seatbelt anyway, are they? <laughs> so instead of cracking on with recalling this dodgy product and upgrading it with their own patented technology, they spend their time composing silly reports which calculate the cost of the human soul. And in fact, they only eventually announced the voluntary product recall just one day before the NHL. HTSA was going to legally enforce it. Well, you didn't voluntarily enforce it at all, did you, Ford? As, I mean, you did, technically, but obviously... <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> but she didn't. Uh, a press professor at the Californian School of Law has since claimed that Pinto was about as safe as any other subcompact car on the market at the time, i.e. not very. And Ford never publicly admitted any wrongdoing, describing the biggest recall in automotive history at the time as simply a move intended to end public concern. The number of lives claimed and the total cost of the company from the release of the Pinto are heavily clouded by belching exhaust fumes, Mother Night magazine, what the... Is, wasn't it Mother Jones? Is this another magazine? Why are all the magazines called Mother? <laughs> Why? Mother Night magazine came up with a death toll of 900, although the NHTSA only ever officially reported 27 deaths. Well, let's how, how about we rely on the governmental safety body rather than the random magazine for the official death toll, yes? The real figure is likely to lie somewhere in between. Oh, okay, fine, Danny! <laughs> Perhaps Ford has been bang on the money all along when they plucked the number 180 out of the air. Ford, just be like, zero, zero, zero. Because as we've all seen, if you repeat a lie enough, it eventually becomes the truth, or people believe it to be the truth. Donald Trump was president. This was basically his entire thing. It was amazing in its terribleness. You are a rude, terrible person. Although the initial cost of the recall was estimated to have been $50 million, it's impossible to ascertain how much more Ford forked out in private lawsuit settlements for the car, which was later dubbed the barbecue that seats four. I hope it wasn't dubbed by that by Ford. It'd be like, the new Ford Pinto, the barbecue that seats four. Uh oh. <laughs> however, however, the damage to Ford's reputation in the long term was priceless. Yeah, Ford's doing terribly. They hardly sell any cars. I walk to work, don't see any Fords. And that's in Europe. It's not even in America. We have loads of car companies here that are quite good. Still, there are Fords everywhere. I would add as hazard a guess, it was somewhere in the region of 5,000 human beings, a couple of hundred pigs, and a cherished memory of a childhood pet. Pet, Danny, there's no price you can put on cherished memories. I bet someone has tried to put a price on cherished memories, the bastard. Smoldering Samsungs. Samsungs? Samsung? Samsung. Why is that word so weird to say? Also, who the f came up with the name of I know it's Chinese, but couldn't you have rebranded Xiaomi or whatever it is for the international market? Like to like, I don't know, Mike. <laughs> if it's just anything's better than Xiaomi. I'm like looking up a Xiaomi thing the other day and I'm like, X A O X W X A I. How the fuck do you spell Xiaomi, Google? Hurry the fuck up! Daddy, chill. Some of my favorite smartphones after over the last decade, and I wanted a Xiaomi because I love the Chinese government spying on me, allegedly. Nope, nope, stop talking, go to jail. Over the last decade emerged from the Samsung Galaxy Note series. They might lack the physical keyboard, which I'm still patiently waiting to see and make an inevitable comeback, and they're technically not a phone at all. The Galaxy Note is more of a hybrid phablet, which is a f***ing unfortunate word that people seem to embrace. But I liked the fact that they were reassuringly chunky and came with a funky stylus, or... S Pen for scribbling notes onto the screen by hand. This always looked quite cool when you were wandering around the pub and taking orders for the next big round of drinks. I have to say, I have one of those iPad Pros with the pencil. I absolutely love the shit out of that thing. I'm always writing stuff, taking notes, don't use paper. It's fantastic. I never got to experience the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 launched in 2016, which was positioned as a new rival to Apple's iPhone. There is no rival to the Apple iPhone, Danny. All hail the iPhone. I'm joking, I do actually have an iPhone. <laughs> but you know, those Apple fanboys. Every, it's, everyone's terrible. No one cares. No one cares what your phone is. Just get over it. Shit. But I tried using an Android once. It was f***ing horrible. <laughs> but then I only had a tiny window of opportunity as the model wasn't around for very long at all. And that's because one of Samsung's biggest ever failures came packaged with a largely unpopular extra feature. The Galaxy Note 7 was prone to just randomly exploding in your pocket and setting your pants on fire. This didn't tend to look quite as cool down the pub. Stylus or no stylus. I don't know. I'd have loved to have seen it. I, I mean, I know these things did catch on fire. So I'd love to have seen it, though. Kaboom. Yes, Rico. Kaboom. Thankfully, there were no fatalities in this case, although at least 55 reports of property damage and 26 report reports of burns, including, of course, one Florida man who received second-degree burns after forking out the $882 for the device. Now, at any point in the past, it'd be like $882 for a phablet. And it's like, holy sh**. It's like, now iPhones, easily over a grand. I mean, I know they're slightly cheaper in America, I think my last weight costs like a thousand something pounds. I mean, equivalent. It's like like $1,500 or something. 
in in my money in check crowns it was like it was like it was i'm like what the f is going on <laughs> what is this world when did phones become more expensive than my f***ing laptop what the fuck? there were also reports of phones blowing up on airplanes prompting u.s aviation authorities and so oh my god i remember this where they do they still do the same they make you take the batteries out or something or it has to be powered on you have to be able to power on your devices when you go through airports it's been so long since I've been to an airport that I've actually forgotten. Uh, on the Galaxy Note, they banned the Galaxy Note 7, which would now be left have to be left behind at home, along with your snow globes and emotional support squirrels. OGBB! The problem was, was all down to a double dose of overheating batteries. Some of the phone's batteries were supplied by the subsidiary Samsung SDI. Isn't that a sexually disease infection? No, that's an STI. Ah! Sexually transmitted infection. Oh, big brain. Close, Samsung, but no cigar. While others, I mean, you wouldn't want a cigar in this case because then it would be like you've named your company Samsung Sexually Transmitted Infections. You don't want that. What are we talking about? We're supplied by, the others were supplied by a Chinese company, Amperex Technology. Samsung initially concluded that the batteries provided by its own subsidiary were the gremlins in the works. They didn't fit properly inside the phone and didn't leave enough room between the protective pouch of the battery and the internal workings of the phone. <laughs> How about you make batteries that fit Samsung, you big brains? This resulted in surprise short-circuiting and fizzes and bangs. The company recalled 1.5 million units of the Galaxy Note 7 and replaced the batteries with the Amperex variety. This is the problem, right? I hate this because it's like if someone recalled my phone, it'd be like, okay, great. So you're going to recall my phone and then they're going to put a new battery in it. And all the time it's away, I'm like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? Just not have a phone? It's like, you know, the warranty. If something breaks that I actually need, like if my laptop breaks, it's like, okay, well, I can get it fixed. Or I can get, if it's in warranty, I can take it into the Apple store and get it repaired. In the meantime, I need a new laptop. So I still have to buy a new one anyway. And then the other one gets back and it's like, oh, great. Now I've got two. What am I supposed to do? I don't understand how this is supposed to work. Warranty things only work well for non-essential items. It's ridiculous. But would you believe it? There was an entirely separate overheating issue with the Amperex batteries too, which came with insufficient insulation material. So all the replacement models were equally prone to pesky random combustion. Oh my god, Samsung. At some point, just be like, burn the phones, here's your money back. And please don't burn the phones, recycle them. Um, <laughs> or I mean, burn them. And what it, it's up to you. It's been argued by some that the phones were rushed into production too quickly and that Samsung was sluggish in identifying and dealing with the problem. Although in comparison to the Ford Pinto saga, Samsung dealt with this crisis at lightning speed. It was also much less of a crisis. Some dude got burns. The other one was called a barbecue for four people. It allegedly was. And not a good sort of barbecue. Not where it's like you can also barbecue on your car, but it's like one where you become the burned meat. Yourself, your body. Because you're dead by an explosion from a fuel tank. I'm, people, you understood. You definitely understood. You saw where I was going. You are a monster. Just two months after the exploding phone was launched, how do I lose my place mid-sentence? That feels like an oversimplification. Samsung suspended all sales of the device, ordered a recall of 2.5 million phones, all 2.5 million phones, and urged customers to stop using them immediately. Just in case not everyone got the memo, the company also, also pushed out updates which prevented the phone from charging and effectively crippled the doomed device. The initial cost of this re- <laughs> you imagine? Do you want to update? Ooh, what's the new features? Our disables charging. I'm gonna pass on this update, Samsung. Just gonna pass on this one. <laughs> the initial cost of this recall of one of the most expensive phones on the market was estimated to be in the region of $5.3 billion. But taking into account the subsequent nosedive in operating profits, some analysts have speculated that the true cost of the failed Galaxy Note 7 is closer to $17 billion. That is, even for a company like Samsung, that is an extraordinary amount of money. Curiously enough, though, the drama hasn't really affected the South Korean company very much in the long term and didn't even spell the end of the galaxy. Uh, okay. I lost my place again. What is wrong with me today? In the middle of a f***ing sentence again, whistle boy. What's going on? I know you have abilities. I just don't know what they are. Uh, which continues to attract acclaim and massive sales today. I genuinely didn't know that this is still a phone that they make. An explosion in your pants is clearly a risk worth taking when you get to play with a funky stylus thing at the bar. I'll have a Molotov cocktail to go with that. But I'm about I've got a coffee, which I'm sure has gone horribly cold, but I'm going to get it anyway. A few moments later. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba. Yes, it is horribly cold. I didn't even get to enjoy one sip of it hot. I made it in the coffee machine and then I left it there, forgot about it. Now I'm just drinking cold coffee. Whatever. Interstellar Burst. 
I suppose, wait, isn't this a video about product recalls? It sounds like we're about to talk about the death of the entire planet, Danny. Oh no, like gamma ray burst. There's so much shit that can just randomly kill us all at any time at like literal light speed. And you're like, ah, oh, can you imagine you're just hanging out and then you're dead? And so is everyone else because of like a gamma ray burst. Shit. <laughs> Life is fragile. The fuck is he talking about? I suppose I should be relieved to declare that I've never once experienced the sensation of having an airbag inflating my face. Perhaps it's something I should put on my bucket list. Yeah, me neither. I've been in a couple of like very minor car accidents. Um, like, you know, car slips into a slap, slams into a bank. I uh, also, <laughs> oh my gosh, I rented a car. <laughs> I was just, I got a, I, I, I got a rental car, drove it home to load it up for a trip. And uh, yeah, as I was parking it outside my house, I just plowed it into my neighbor's car. <laughs> just absolutely like fully down the side. I was just parallel parking in. I don't know what was wrong with me. I can parallel park, not very well, but I can do it. Never had a car accident in my life. And I'm just parking the car and I just absolutely scraped the shit off the side of my rental car, like at least four panels. And also my neighbor's car, which was the identical model of car. And, uh, yeah, I took it back to the rental company and I was like, listen, <laughs> there's some damage. And they're like, oh, no, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I had a little accident. And they're like, well, it's good you took out the fully insurance, isn't it? And I'm like, bloody right it is. And then I left and they were like, that's it. Full insurance. Like, you know how they always like, do you want that extra insurance? And I always used to say no, because I, this is such a tangent. I'm sorry. Like, skip ahead 30 seconds if you're bored. No. No, I don't think I will. I always used to get that extra insurance, you know, that you pay. It was like, I don't know, equivalent of like 100 bucks a year or whatever. And it insured you against the rental car crashing. So if you crash the rental car and you have to pay like a grand because you crashed it, you know, it was your part of the thing, it insured you against that so you could go and claim it. It was one time I did it because I locked the keys in the car and I had to break the window. So I made a claim. It took like six months and 700 emails to finally get the fucking insurance company's payouts. But from that point on, I was like, okay. Look, I'm either taking the insurance and I'm just walking away if I crash it, or I'm just gonna eat shit and pay the grand because it was such a f***ing hassle to get from insurance. Insurance, something like that, some company like that. I think it was a British company. F me, it was a f***ing nightmare. Yeah, don't get those things, they suck. Okay, and let's get back to what the f*** we're talking about today. But unless you've got a stopgap job working as a crash test dummy, I imagine that having an airbag blow up in your face is usually a sign that you're having an unexpectedly bad day, and that sensation wouldn't be particularly pleasant regardless of whether or not you've just totaled your new car. It's often described as feeling like you're getting kicked in the face by a very strong, fluffy bunny. Well then. How about that? But even though I'm no expert, there's one thing I really wouldn't want to happen if I ever did find myself engulfed in an airbag. I really wouldn't want it to shoot a bit of shrapnel in my face as it deployed. Yeah, things you don't put in air, in like uh, airbags. Ball bearings, shrapnel, semen. <laughs> You what? Sadly, this was the minor design issue with a few airbags sold by the Japanese automotive parts company Takata Corporation, although that's possibly underselling the problem just a little bit. And what must surely go down in history as the biggest and most costly product recall of all time, this minor design flaw from a company which held 20% of the global airbag market involved at least 27 deaths, affected over 50 million vehicles. Oh man, this is gonna be expensive. And caused massive financial headache for the 19 major automakers who installed them in their cars between 2002 and 2015. It was a recall that gradually grew in momentum from around 2013. Takata claims that the offending airbags were all produced at a single plant in Mexico, which had mishandled manufacturing of explosive propellants and improperly stored the chemicals used in the airbags. They later claimed that the excessive moisture and humidity seeping inside the inflators could also be a factor, as this was excuse me, destabilizing the volatile propellant inside the bags. Whatever the reason, there was, ah, oh, what is it? I have a delivery from UPS, don't I? Don't I? Ah. A few moments later. Whatever the reason, there was clearly a problem when on deployment, these bags fired metal shards into the face of the passengers they were meant to be saving. There were 19 reported deaths. Wait, so these airbags were literally shoving metal through people's brains and shit. In the US alone, with a total of 27 deaths worldwide and more than 400 injuries. And the cost to the automobile industry in general was phenomenal. For starters, Takata was ordered to pay a billion dollar criminal penalty by the Justice Department after pleading guilty to criminal wrongdoing. That's insane. 
Isn't that, that's gotta be one of the biggest fines ever. Like a billion dollar fine. This included a $25 million fine and a $975 million restitution divided between physically injured customers and the automakers who had now been forced into recalling their death trap cars at their own expense. A year later in 2018, Takata was, so it's not really a fine, it's more like a restitution. It's like that's going towards paying to get this fixed rather than just like, yeah, 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 money, money, money for the government. You know, which they can spend on foreign wars and stuff. A, rich. A year later, in 2018, Takata was accused of concealing safety problems, systematically falsifying critical test data, and failing to report safety defects. Sounds familiar in the automobile world, doesn't it? Looks like you're up to no good again! They agreed to pay another $650 million to settle these complaints, and that money was put aside by 44 state jurisdictions to compensate injured drivers. Oh, good lord. Takata had already buckled under the strain by that point, and they filed for bankruptcy after it became abundantly clear that they owed more in compensation than they could ever afford to make in the future. Wow. When the fine is more than you could ever possibly make, it's like, you know you gotta find good. The surviving assets were sold to its biggest competitor, the Chinese and US outfit, Key Safety Systems. But this left the automakers out of pocket as they still had to deal with a recall of their own vehicles. Between them, companies such as Ford, Toyota, BMW, Volkswagen, and many others have lost hundreds of millions of dollars in ensuring that their customers get the exploding airbags replaced. It's been suggested that the overall cost of replacing 100 million airbags could be, the region, could be in the region of 24 billion dollars. That is extraordinary. But the product recall is still going strong, and it appears that millions more vehicles could potentially get added to the list. This mess could drag on for years. Now I'm slightly afraid that my car's got an exploding airbag. <laughs> Wait, when were these cars made? I feel like I need to look this shit up. So you're dead. Now what? 2015. Now nah, I'm good. Woo! I don't know when my car was made, but it it's not that old. It's two years old? Three years old? It's not 2015, I'm not getting any metal blowing up in my face. This year you may have passed away without even being aware of it. Maybe Takata could have should have given up on this kind of thing back in the 1990s when over 8 million of their seatbelts were recalled after it was found they had a tendency to automatically release during an accident. <laughs> oh my god. What the f*** are you up to, Takata? It doesn't really inspire much confidence, does it? Much like super speedy brum brum cars, it sounds as if we'd all have been better off if this company of clowns had got up in smoke years ago. Yes! And this has been an episode of Brain Blaze. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd uh, like to purchase some merch, you can do that at purchthemerch.co. Yeah, you can. And uh, what's that? What else? I'll see you next time. Have a good one. <laughs> what sort of ending to that was the video was that fact, boy? Have you ever said that before? Have a good one. <laughs> You've been doing this for years. Why are you so shit? Mercury Bobcat is a brilliant name. It sounds like a Bobcat from Mercury. Yes!